All right, so first off, we have to make sure that everyone has rights to build on the land, and I've invited people to join the Alt-I group, which is the group that belongs to this island, and if you're in that group, you have rights to build on the land, which we need to go forward with the project. So <clears throat> go ahead, and I think that everyone here is part of the group, but just make sure. Check under your groups, which is under me, sorry, under communicate groups in the menu, under communicate groups. And in your communicate groups window, you should see the group alt caret i, alt i on it. And it should be in bold, a little darker, indicating that it has been activated. Another way to tell if you've joined the group and it's been activated is to right-click or command-click on the group, Alt-I, which will pull up a shortcut menu. The first word in the list, Activate, should be grayed out, indicating that you've already joined and activated the group. The next thing to test is, can we actually build? So now that we're all in the group, let's go ahead and see. You should be able to build. So. Command click if you're on a Mac, you can command click <clears throat> or right click on the land, just the land right underneath you at your feet or in front of you. And you should get a little right click shortcut menu that says build at the bottom of it. So when you click on build, you should get a build window with different shapes in it. Okay. Let me know if you're there. <clears throat> okay, so go ahead and just choose one of the shapes. Um, try to stay away from um, cylinder spheres and sort of round things for now. We'll just stick with like the triangles and squares and cones and stuff just to make it easier uh, to show you some of the features. I'm going to choose a little triangle here. Okay, so once you choose that shape and then you click on the ground in front of you, you should see it res right in front of you. So Ashley, check that you are Oh, grass is different. Yeah, try um, try something else, like a shape, like a box or a triangle or a cone, something like that. I think it thinks of grass and trees like that as editing the terrain. Good. Okay. All right, so you have now an object in front of you. And you can do lots of things with that object, as um, Adam is doing right now. You can move it, you can rotate it, you can scale it, make it bigger, smaller, that kind of a thing. Uh, you can do all of that inside the edit window. You'll know you're in the edit window because that little build window will be up, and you'll probably see little handles around the object depending on what you've chosen. So, for example, when you choose move, it has sort of red, blue, and green handles around it that move it to the right or to the left or up and down. And remember, this is three-dimensional space, so it also moves it forward and back. And depending on how you're looking at it, again, using those navigation controls of holding the Alt or Option button down and then rotating around it, you can see different sides of it and also get a better grip on whether it's moving backwards or forwards and face forward and space and that kind of a thing. And again, if you don't remember how to navigate an orbit around it, again, you can just go to the camera controls button at the bottom of the menu and use those graphical controls to move around it, up and down, to, pa to pan, and to zoom in and out. Okay, so go ahead and make some modifications. So move it up, down, right, left, backwards, forwards, just to get a feel for it make it a little bigger, make it a little smaller. Um, to make it bigger and smaller, you're going to click on the stretch radio button. And note that there's also stretch both sides. There's a little checkbox that says stretch both sides that will actually stretch things, uh, that scale it proportionally. 
Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. It'll scale it proportionally. Okay, um, rotate, uh, you'll see the rings around it, the red, blue, and green rings where you can rotate it around in different planes. Okay, so now that you've gotten a feel for some of the basic stuff, let's look at some of the features here. One of the most important things that we'll do is modifying our permissions so that other people can modify, copy, and transfer your object, basically so they can remix and mesh it up. Okay, so in your edit window, go to the bottom of it where it says anyone can move or copy. So there are two checkboxes under anyone, move and copy. Check both of those checkboxes. And underneath that, you'll see next owner and then three checkboxes, modify, copy, and transfer will probably by default already be checked. So under anyone, move and copy, both checkboxes are checked. And under next owner, modify, copy, and transfer are checked. So move up to the middle of the window and you'll see where it indicates a group and that it's Alt-I, and underneath that there's a checkbox that says Share. Check that checkbox. Okay, so again, under where it says Group Alt-I, check the Share checkbox. So the Share checkbox, in addition to the five checkboxes on the bottom underneath Anyone and Next Owner, should all be checked so that other people can modify, copy, and transfer your object. Did somebody ask a question? You guys can turn on your speak button and talk if you want, if that's easier. Okay, so just to test where um, that we all have those checkboxes checked, go ahead and let's rotate. So Ashley, take Adam's object. Cody, take Ashley's object. And Adam, take Cody's object and see if you can modify each other's objects. You should be able to if all those checkboxes are checked. All right, so let's move on to textures. Fun stuff. Okay, <clears throat> so click on the texture tab. So in the build window, it's right next to features. So it goes general object features texture. And where the texture tab is, you'll see that you have a texture of wood. If you click on that, you have other textures that you can choose from. Um, for now, let's just go ahead and leave it wood. Um, I do want to show you the color, though. Uh, if you click on the color box, right now it's white, and then you can apply a different color to it. So I'll just make it blue for a sec here. Okay, so Cody, you have a question here. Both your textures and colors have a big lock on them. Sometimes it's also that um, you don't have your object selected, like for some reason, like it's been, it's become unselected. So just make sure that if like, so, like you can't see something in the build window, just make sure your object's actually selected. Okay, good. So back at the texture tab, and let's go back to texture and click on the little wood button, wood box. And it should give you the texture window, which then puts you in your inventory. You'll see your inventory folder on the right-hand side. And there's a texture folder in there, which if you expand that, there should be some default textures in there that you can choose from. Mine has many, many textures in it that I've uploaded, but you should see some default uh, textures there. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose a texture here, and it's an image. So go ahead and just choose one of the textures or images in there and apply it. Okay, good. So it looks like everybody has a texture on there, good. 
So what would happen, note, note that the texture went on all the different sides of my object, which if you have a round object, doesn't matter so much, but if you have like a box or something that's polygonal, then you know maybe you only want it to be on one side. How can I put the texture just on one side? Exactly, ding, 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 select face. So in the edit window, you have a select face radio button on the top, right underneath move, rotate, stretch, and select face. And you want to click the select face radio button, and then you'll see that your object has these little sort of targets all over it. And then you just want to click on one side of the object, and that's means that that particular face of that object, that side is selected, and then you can apply an image or a texture just to that side so that it doesn't go on all the sides like it has before. So I'll go ahead and put on um, select a face and then put a different image on this one side. Okay. Note also that the texture is going on there and it's repeating itself. It might be like repeating itself and maybe you do or do not want it to be repeated. Um, note that in the texture window where it says repeats per face and it says horizontal and vertical and it says whatever, you know, depending on what the image is, it'll maybe say one point something or two point something or four or five. So it's repeating itself depending on the image and the uh, size of the object. So if I don't want it to repeat itself, under repeats per face, I'm just going to make it one under horizontal and one under vertical. And that way it's just one instead of repeating itself. Okay. So if I wanted to remove an image from just one side at a time, so that's only showing on so I can kind of sort of control like the textures that are on each side, then I could just choose again that face, go to texture, and I can change the texture or just hit blank in the texture window and make that particular side blank. There are other options here where you can choose to flip an object. So if I click on the flip horizontal or flip vertical, it will do those accordingly. So there are just some things that you, you know, you can play with. So that's the quickie on select face and texture. Now, if you want to upload your own textures, which you want to because you'll use the Photoshop tennis objects that you guys have, then um, I'm going to give you some uh, Linden dollars so that each of you can upload your own images and sounds to make your own objects. So uh, just hold on a second and I'll, and I'll give you each of you guys a hundred. You'll be rich in Second Life. Okay, so that was Adam and Ashley. And then where'd Cody go? Where'd go? Okay, so each of you should now have. 100 Linden dollars in your account. It will say so in the top menu. And each image or sound that you upload is 10, 10 Linden dollars. Um, so if you, if you want to upload more than 10, yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, if you want to upload more than 10, you're of course welcome to. I think it's, I forget what the exchange rate is. I think it's like, um, 
for a hundred, it's maybe like 43 cents or something like that. Yeah, I think like a hundred Linden dollars is like 43 cents. So it's like really, really minimal if you want to kind of go crazy with things. So what I would suggest is take an image that you have on your computer now, preferably one that is not high res, one that's like lower res, like 72 DPI or 96 DPI, and not huge either. So, um, Second Life definitely has issues with uploading big images. Okay, so something maybe that's like moderately sized and um, lower res, 72 or 96 DPI, and try uploading it and apply it to your object. Try playing with selecting a face and applying it to just that face or setting it so that it doesn't repeat, etc. Uh, Cody, so since yours is, it looks like a cone here, you'll probably have to rotate orbit around your object so that you can see the other side of it and choose it. So if you do select face, there's really only two faces to your object, the cone part and the underneath part. So you'll have to rotate around it and choose either the cone part or the underneath part, like orbit around to the under part where it's the green part, and you can choose that. Okay, good. All right, so is everyone good with uploading an image and applying it? Uh, one thing to point out is to upload an image, it's under Build Upload in the menu. Okay, Build Upload or um, Command U or Control U on a PC. So Command U or Control U is to upload and you can upload in bulk or one file at a time. For now, let's just try one image. Okay, and once you've uploaded, it will go into your inventory into the textures folder. Once it's in the textures folder in your inventory, and you try to change a texture on your object, you'll see it in your textures folder. If you for some reason don't immediately see it in your textures folder, you can always search for it under the name, the file name that you uploaded it under. So for example, <clears throat> if I go to my texture and I don't see it, right where the search field is above the texture, in the texture window, I can search for the name of the file. And then find it and apply it. Okay, I know you guys are still working on stuff. Um, Ashley, I think you're probably still uploading, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep talking. So one other thing that I wanted to point out. Under the objects features. Okay, good. Okay, great. 
Okay, so under the Features tab, you'll see a little checkbox called Flexible Path. If you check that, and again, this also depends on what kind of objects you have, <clears throat> then your object actually becomes flexible. So note how my object, now that I've clicked Flexible Path under Features, note how it's actually moving in the wind, right? So if I move it, oops, away from it here so I can have some space. Okay, so now if I move my object, <clears throat> you'll see that it actually has a flexible path to it. It moves with the wind and it has sort of an interesting, that gives it an interesting texture or a totally different feel. And again, this depends on what kind of object you have. If you have a, a sphere, it's not going to be able to be a flexible path. So um, just polygons and triangles, cones, things like that, you'll be able to make a flexible path. <clears throat> you can even modify it further by going to the Object tab. I see that um, some of you have played with this already, but there's there are things in there where you can adjust twist, taper, shear, etc. So if I click on the twist and twist this, note how it sort of starts twisting in on itself. And it's twisting the bottom or the top or the bottom or the end depending on what you choose. So I now have this like little abstract little flexible object. Okay, last but not least, let's look at sounds. So I'm going to give each of you a sound script. The sound script, once I give it to you, I believe it will go in your inventory under scripts. Although I'm not sure. I'm going to drag it on and if you guys could tell me where it goes. I know I know it goes somewhere in your inventory. You can access your inventory by going to Command I or Control I. Or by hitting the little luggage button on the left hand side. Where did Ashley go? Oh, there you are. Okay. So you should all have a sound script now. <clears throat> so we're going to apply that sound script to our object. It's really just a couple of lines of code that tells it to play the sound file that's in the object. Okay. So in your object edit window, click on the content tab, the very last tab, content. and then drag the sound script in your inventory to the contents tab. Okay, again, you can get to your inventory window by hitting Command I if you're on a Mac or Control I if you're on a PC. And I'm gonna give you each a couple of different sounds too, just so you have some sounds to play with. <clears throat> okay, so if you can't find your sound script, just open up your win inventory window, control I or command I, and then just type in sound or script into the search box.
Okay, so I gave each of you a sound. Yeah, because we haven't added our sound yet, Ashley. So that's the next step. <clears throat> okay, so you should have your sound script in your object now. No problem. Um, so go ahead and find your sound in your inventory. So again, open up your inventory folder, control I or command I. And the sound should be under a folder called sounds. But uh, just so you know what I gave you, I think I gave you, Ashley, I gave you a sound called Atmo, A-T-M-O. Adam, I think I gave you a sound called Groove. And Cody, I think I gave you a sound called NZ Wetlands. Okay, did it go into a folder called Sounds? Okay, good. All right, so look in your Sounds folder. Drag that sound into the Contents folder where your sound script is. Okay, so I'll do that along with you guys. So here we are in the content folder where our sound script is. I'm going to open up my inventory folder, control or command I, and I will take one of my sounds and put it into the contents folder. So now that there is a sound there and a sound script, it can play it. So if you exit the editing window, just close it and then click on your object, which now should be a clickable object, you should hear your sound. Okay, so <laughs> that's fun with sounds and textures. <clears throat> um, Cody put a rotation script on it. So that one's also a pretty fun script. Um, there are a couple other scripts around, like this blue oval sculpture sort of in front has an animation script on it. <clears throat> so... I'll just give you guys a couple of, of scripts that you can apply. Yeah, there, I think this one has, this one has, this one in front of me, I think has, oh, I thought it had an animation script. Okay, so I'll give you an animation script and, um, oh no, I think it's this one. There we go. Um, rotation script. Here's a rotation script if you want it. So just a note about adding sounds. Sounds that are uploaded need to be WAV files, .wav files. So you'll probably need to edit them in Audacity or some similar program. All of the sounds must be less than 10 seconds long. Okay, so of the stuff that you've picked out of your free sounds and how you guys were like kind of mixing, mashing um, your free sound sounds, just choose a sound or sounds and make it less than 10 seconds long you know 9.9 .9, anywhere from you know 1 to 9.9 .9 seconds export it as a wave file and then you can upload it into second life so those are the only limitations is it has to be a wave file file 
and less than 10 seconds long. Okay, now that you have the sound script, you can just drag that into the contents folder of any object and then drag your sound into that contents folder too. Oh, um, Cody, do you still need the sound script? So there are lots of things if you just play around with if you just play around with it you'll see that you can modify it and do all kinds of things, add scripts to it, um, make the textures scroll across and animate, make it rotate, um, you know, modify the textures, modify just you know the lighting on it even. You'll see under the object tab, sorry, the, um, I think it's the features tab. Yeah, the, te the texture tab. There's an option to have it glow, have it be really bright. If you check full bright, uh, make it transparent. I think some of you guys are already um, experimenting with that. So yeah, there are a lot of options here. You can even even build objects on top of each other. So if I wanted to link an object together with another one, let's say I wanted to, and I'll just um, res an object right here. Okay. So if I wanted to link these two objects together, let's just pretend this is a finished object. I can select that object while I'm in the edit window and then hold shift down and select the object underneath that. And then under the build window, uh, sorry, under the build menu, I can click on link or command L or control L. Okay, that way now when I select one, I'm actually selecting both because they're now one object. So when I move or s modify, sorry, move or select one of them, I'm actually moving or selecting both of them. So when you're actually making an object that has multiple parts to it, it's good to be able to link them together. And, uh, and again, that's under the build menu in the top menu, build link, or similarly build on link. Okay. If you're playing around, please, please do clean up after yourself. Uh, if you leave some objects around that you don't need, just right click or command click on it and hit delete. So just, you know, try not to leave extraneous objects lying around. And like over here, I think this is somebody's cone over here. Let's see. So just look around you, get rid of any extraneous objects. If you get your object to a place where you like it and you want to save a copy of it because you know you're kind of attached to it or whatever, and you don't you want like an original copy before it gets modified and changes into something else, you can take a copy of it. You can take a copy just by right clicking or command clicking and then going down to take copy. Okay. That will place a copy of it in your inventory. Make sure you name your object so that it sort of makes sense for you to be able to find later. Like, don't make it just, you know, like Ashley or Cody or Adam's object. Like, give it a description so you remember what it is. All right. Does anybody have any questions?
Yeah, no problem. Um, you might run into some things like I know that you're as you're uploading and building stuff, you might run into some issues. So just, you know, ping the Google group email if you run into anything. But I would suggest just to keep things simple for when you're uploading, try to upload your images in a moderate, medium size, lower res, and keep your sounds, you know, pretty, pretty short for now too. Um, just to make, um, keep things simple. I'm guessing that everybody already has some in, some experience in editing sounds or no? It's like, is everyone familiar with Audacity? Okay, great. Good, good. I think I have a tutorial, a video tutorial on Audacity I can forward to the class too if anyone, anyone needs any help with that. Okay, so oh, I'm getting dizzy on this. Okay. So as you play with things, I think like this is probably one of the more fun assignments um, because you're actually like now working with all those different things that we've done throughout the whole semester of like the images and the sounds and now you're in a 3D space. So uh, this is actually, this is just like one of my favorite parts of the class. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it and have fun with it. If you run into anything, just let me know. Um, but check back, like as people start working on their sculptures and everybody modifies um, everybody else's, it's really fun to see how it grows and how it changes. I'd encourage you, like, again, you, you already have one object in here, try to make another one and then modify somebody else's. So change something about somebody else's, the, the color, the texture, the shape, the sound, whatever it is, whatever you feel like resonates with you most. Okay, and I encourage you to just get creative with it, so, and have fun with it. All right, guys, thank you.